The positive image of Laney and others was hopeful, but the reality for most blacks was hard, back-breaking work and servitude. I've been a factory hand, janitor, and porter, and butler, and wiping engines on the railroad. I worked as a helper for a carpenter and laying bricks for masons. I've been a driver of teams, a pick and shovel man, and drove steel for a section boss. I was a hand on the Mississippi and working in the steel foundry and seemed like I did a hundred more jobs. My grandma would work in the tub washing the clothes of the prominent white people of our city. And for all of that washing, for the whole white family, washing and then ironing, she got a dollar and a half for the whole family laundry at the end of it. So there were several families that she had, but it was just a dollar and a half for all of that work. White folks didn't have no feeling for you. They pretended they did. They had nannies to give their child comfort. That was my name, Nanny. They would teach their children they were better than you. You was giving them all that love, and you'd hear them say, you're not supposed to love Nanny. Nanny's a nigger. And they would say it so nasty till it would cut your heart out almost. And you couldn't say a mumbling word. A woman knows how to shift a smile when the burden is so heavy. Know how to smile when she want to cry. Smile when sorrow done touch her so deeply. So that's why I feel black women in the field had to pray and had to moan and had to cry. Them prayers went a long way and protected a lot of people. And God wiped away those tears. And the next morning, we had the strength to go on. Dorothy Bolden. But despite all the obstacles, blacks began to rise. More blacks were being educated. There was now a growing black middle class. And the children of the former slaves were not too quick to bow down to the white man as their parents had. Whites perceived a new generation of black southerners, the sons and the daughters and the grandsons and granddaughters of the, of the former slaves, who had not been disciplined by slavery, who had never known slavery, who were perceived as much more restless and obviously much more threatening because unlike some of their parents and grandparents, they seemed less afraid of whites. We are not the Negro from whom the chains of slavery fell a quarter of a century ago. Most assuredly not. We are now qualified as being the equal of whites and should be treated as such. Every time we see a Negro physician, it does us good. When we see a Negro pharmacist, it goes still better. When we see the lawyers, professors, bank presidents, inventors, machinists, mechanics, we grin as much as our mouth will allow and shout, the Negro is coming. Editor, Richmond Planet. Many whites feared since the end of slavery that blacks would come to feel they were equal to whites. Now that fear seemed realized. The colored race is getting more unreliable. Freedom has ruined them in every way. Only the old-timey darkies can be trusted. The young ones are sullen and grow more insolent every day. They don't sing as they used to. You should have known the old days of the plantation. Every year, it seems they're losing more and more of their own confessed good humor. I sometimes feel I don't know them anymore. They've grown so glum and serious, or I'm free to say I'm scared of them. <laughs> 